Our next presenter is President and CEO of Felta Multimedia, Mylene Abriva. Thank you very much, Richard. And a uh, wonderful morning to all of you. I'd like to give a short background of where I came from and what I've been through to be here today with you this, after, well, this morning. First of all, I came from a family of seven children. Six of us were girls. I'm the third child. I'm the third daughter. So I had this middle child syndrome. So I had to be better than my two older sisters because they're overachievers. So I had to be an over, overachiever. So that's, my, that's how I grew up. With six, child, six, uh, six, uh, well, six sisters, uh, sorry, including myself and a brother. And throughout my uh, school days, I wasn't really smart, but my, for some reason I was put in the honor sections and I really had a hard time passing physics. And that segue to why, why I'm into robotics, because I wanted children to enjoy science and technology. Now, unlike before, when you have drawings on the blackboard and you're supposed to compute force and distance, right? It's so hard then. And then when I was working, I was a victim of sexual harass harassment. I worked in the U.S. for a foreign firm, which is a very macho industry because we manufactured plastic parts for the car industry in Detroit. And then I was handling international trade relations, and I did very well. I handled Japan, uh, Germany, and uh, Mexico and Canada. And my sales manager verbally abused me for two months. And I would call my mom, Ma, uwi na ako. <laughs> Kasi my boss is so mean. And he would call me the B-I-T-C-H every day. And, and scream and shout in the sales office. And I thought, okay, I thought it was, what's a BITCH? I would even ask my coworkers. Because at that time, I was the only female, only Asian in a, in a, in a company where you have the blue collar workers and the executives. But eventually, I told the manager, I said, you know, you just, I'm just doing my job. Do your job, or else I'll take it. And take note, two years after, I did take his job. So I did become the sales manager. <laughs> yeah, that's what you call power of uh, uh, res res resilience. And then I became a CEO of my parents' company. I came back home because my father said, Iha, tulungan mo na lang kami sa business because I didn't really want to stay very long in the, in the U.S. And um, I, I became the president of the Philippine Marketing Association only the eighth lady president in 55 years. We had 500 members, 32 universities, and uh, we had about 300 marketing professionals under my wing. And I told the other women, I said, if I could do it, you can do it and make history. Now moving towards my presentation, okay. I'd like to talk to you about my advocacy for encouraging women and girls to get into STEM. STEM means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I think this is very crucial for our country, especially for the Asian integration. You see, other countries have a very steep decline in the number of students who are taking science and technology, specifically in the developed countries like the United States, Netherlands, and France, and even Korea, our neighbor. And so the European Commission had this role study, as we call it, and they asked this question, I would like to become a scientist to 15-year-olds in several countries. And what was the, the result? In poor countries, girls or students would like to be scientists, but they don't have the opportunity. And, oops. In wealthy countries, very few want to be scientists, specifically the girls. And another question posed was, I would like to, be, get, to get a job in technology. And what's the result? Again, the same pattern. Poor countries, the girls, or the, even the boys, want to have a job in the techno in technology field, but they don't have the opportunity. And here, in wealthy countries, nearly no girls want to be in technology. And even the boys don't want to be in technology. And specifically, I'd like to mention Japan, because Japan is a technology-driven country, and it's very alarming that boys and girls don't want to be in technology. So they may be facing a problem. So 
the essence or the implications is that science and technology play a key role in modern society. We have to have a knowledge-based and competitive workforce. And companies will find it increasingly, increasingly difficult to attract and, and maintain the right workforce in the future. And this is the reason why, as early as nine years old, I'm teaching robotics in schools. And if I may quote our famous president, uh, the US, Obama, Barack Obama, said that, think about new and creative ways to engage young people in science and engineering, like science festivals, robotics competitions, and fairs that encourage young people to create, to build, and invent, to be makers of things, not just consumers of things. We want our children to make things, not just consume, because they are our future. So the Rose studies revealed that we should have increasing, we have to increase children's interest in attainment levels. We also need to promote girls' interest in science and technology. The prime importance of values of attitudes and meaning context for interest in science and technology. We have to motivate, we have to have meaningful and engaging programs in science and technology. And we have to link up to what the learners bring to the classroom. And we have to humanize the school. No more memorizing. How many of you have memorized your formulas in school? Right? We were, yes, right? We were memorized and we'd, you know, uh, memorize and memorize. And then you'd forget how to apply it. So we have to have this kind of technique, which is humanize our school system. Now, what am I doing in my personal capacity? First is that I organize robotics competitions, one of which is what is called First Lego League. First is, uh, means it's a foundation called First for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. It's based in the US. And of course, Lego, which is uh, my principal. And we bring children to, uh, to compete for, for the Philippines. And its research briefs, our theme for this year is Trash Trek, wherein ro robots are made to be able to eliminate or recycle trash. So that's our theme for this year. In addition, we have integrated the curriculum, uh, the robotics in the curriculum, which is the Philippine Robotics Academy. So several schools have already implemented this. We have the textbooks and we have trained their teachers. And this is the, my banner project, which is the Philippine Robotics Olympiad. We have won several gold medals silver medals, even bronze medals for the Philippines. We bring the kids to the US. We bring the kids, we just came back from Qatar a few months ago and we're leaving for India and then now uh, also for Australia for this year. And we give them the opportunity, not just to represent their school, but to represent the country. And this is the Philippine Robotics Olympiad. So as you can see, we have more girls. When I started the Philippine Robotics Olympiad 15 years ago, there were no girls. In fact, if I have one girl, I would call her Ikaw yung Muse, ha? Ikaw yung ating Muse, because they would really have, we would really never would have uh, girls at that time. Only in the last six to seven years, we had girls. So we have now private, uh, all girls schools participating. We have 600 schools participa participating nationwide. That has grown from a measly eight when I started in 1999. In fact, I call them the brave schools. All eight were the brave schools, and it started and it just uh, revolutionized the whole education program. And uh, this is my new baby. It's uh, called the I Create Cafe, which we are building in Bonifacio Global City. It's, uh, I call it the creativity on demand. So you just come in, it's just like, an, the business model is just an internet cafe. We teach children how to do animation. How many of you have uh, seen the Lego movie? We can make that <laughs> there. The Lego movie, the, we have do digital animation, and then we have digital publishing, and then robotics and other things. And we also have uh, this, uh, I've signed up as the partner for Miriam Innovation Center. It's called the Makerspace. For those in Quezon City, we have this uh, being built in Katipunan. It's a place where we will be teaching electronics, robotics, and mechatronics for girls. In fact, we're organizing the Asia-Pacific Girls Robotics Competition, and that will be held, it will be held in this place. We're also teaching the hearing impaired how to, how to, uh, to learn robotics, because uh, the hearing impaired, they're normal children, but they're about two years behind because they couldn't hear. 
So that's uh, what we're doing for, for these coming months. And finally, we have the Blooming STEM. Blooming STEM is um, a Bloom TV. It's a portal for women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's a way for us to share our views about STEM. Uh, it's a portal, and we have a dialogue. And um, I'd like to show a short video to cap up my talk. This is about the, uh, the Philippine Robotics Olympiad, where we won as a bronze medal in Russia. Patok ang robot sa mga bata at pati na rin sa mga young at heart. Pero ang iba hindi na nagpabili kung sila mismo ang gumagawa ng mga robot. Sila na ba nakakabili oh. ba yung ganyang bata? May potential silang maging future engineer o inventors. Tama, gaya ng mga batang nagtagisan sa 2014 Philippine Robotics Olympiad. Ibinida nila mga gawa nilang robot na may iba-ibang abilidad. Ang patok na balita, ibandila mo, Bettina, magsaysay. Bibong-bibo ipinagmalaki ni Nasali, Abiji at Blue ang kanilang project na ScanBot. Kaya nitong tukuyin ang mga lumilipad na bagay sa space gaya ng meteor at sirain ito bago pa man tumama sa lupa. No matter what, win or lose, we're gonna send this message to NASA. If we send this to NASA, they will approve this robot. And when they approve this robot, they will be sending this robot outer space. Ago pansin din ang SPADE o mitigation robot ng elementary students ng Dr. Young as Colleges Incorporated. Sumasayaw pa ang mga presenter. May tatlong kategorya ang kompetisyon. Technical, soccer, at creative category. Hindi na itago ni John Dexter ang panghihinayang na hindi napasok ng kanyang robot ang mga bola sa technical category. Grabe po yung ano ka ba. Ngayon ka lang nararamdaman po pagkatapos po nila. Grabe, pero exciting po talaga. Matapos ang ilang oras ng presentation, kabilang sa mga nanalo ang Dr. Yangas Colleges Incorporated. Masaya po sa experience po. Siguro po, dagdag pressure. Very thankful po kami kasi malaking blessing po na manalo kami. Higit sa kompetisyon, gusto ng organizers ng Philippine Robotics Olympiad na mahikayat at ma-develop ang abilidad ng mga bata na future engineers, scientists at inventors. Ang nanalong labing dalawang grupo ang bubuo sa Philippine contingent para sa 2014 World Robot Olympiad na gaganapin sa Sochi, Russia kung saan 36 na bansa ang lalaho. Bettina Magsaysay, ABS-CBN News. Okay, so that's uh, my video of what we're doing. And I'd like to just leave a word for, th for thought for all of you. I think it's best for us to have a social value in everything we're doing. If we find that we're giving and uh, we're giving an impact, I mean, we're impacting a lot of lives, it's not a business or it's not a corporate uh, you know, uh, job that we're having, but it's really something of a passion. Number two is that we should take care of our children. They're our future and we have to make them succeed. And lastly, let's be patriotic. We have to love our country. I'm wearing a Filipinian outfit right now by Aika Serafica, my designer. Yes, you see, I do model. You see, techies do model. <laughs> and uh, I think um, it's really very uh, beautiful. Thank you very much, Aika. And uh, let's love our country, and best of all, love God as well. God bless.